He's one of the um, you know prominent figures in the biotech industry. He's uh, one of the few that literally helped found uh, this industry. There is an incredible alumni organization of of people in companies who really owe their their existence or their success in companies to Steve. He's uh, certainly one of the founders of the industry itself. So I started my career here in San Francisco in 1966, 42 years ago, largely to get away from my parents. My dad was well known and every place I went I was George's son. And I wanted to go to a place where I wasn't George's son that nobody had ever heard of my dad or what he was or what he did and I could start my own career. Whatever I did in life was going to be because of me. Uh, Steve was a key advisor as head of the biotech practice uh, for Ernst & Young. So in 1968, I got involved with the biotech industry and helping a guy named Alex Efroni start a company called Alza. Steve was this young accountant on the Alza account. Within a year, Alex Efroni was convinced that he was the accountant that he wanted to handle the company going forward. 1969, I helped some guys start a company called Cetus. Several years later, I helped Bobby Swanson get Genentech started. I helped the guys get Amgen started, and off we were in, into building an industry. As a financial officer at one of the early biotech companies, Cetus Corporation, Steve was you know, vital to helping us fund our company in the early days of biotech. I was asked by the founders to recommend an accountant for the company, and I immediately told them, Arthur oh, Young and Company, but only if you insist on Steve Burrell as being the accountant in charge. So in 1993, I left my career at Ernst & Young, 28 years, one of the top partners in the firm worldwide to start Berlin Company. No business plan, no knowledge of what I was going to do. It was just time to repot myself and start over. The secret to Steve's success in business is his ability to think differently than other people. Uh, think ahead, not just think about what's happening around him today, but what's going to happen in the future. He strikes me almost as one of these uh, characters that's seen a cartoon that has this dust swirling around him. He's full of motion, full of energy, full of, uh, full of excitement. It's really at the straddling both the science and the, uh, the finance world and having creative uh, approaches in both that I think makes him the, uh, so successful. Whenever there's a new technology, whenever there's a new opportunity, one finds Steve. He's filled vacuums for the industry, uh, starting with uh, initiating one of the first life sciences surveys to really get a global perspective uh, on the industry. Is the major source of data associated with the industry. Steve was also chair of the committee in San Francisco that put together the proposal for the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, uh, the stem cell research center that was up for grabs within California a few years ago. He also uh, loves education and loves helping people learn and creating environments where people learn. I've been nurturing this idea of a course where the students at the university could get introduced to the business world. The program that he developed at UCSF called Idea to IPO, I think that's seven or eight years old, maybe even older than that. The idea was take that initial concept where these students were working at the bench and developing it and some of those ideas could be translated into a company. But how do you do that? Steve, being the type of connector that he is, that he knows so many people, he was a natural for doing that sort of thing. And what came out of that was uh, an actual company that, in the end, I got involved in helping to found. He uh, actually helped me found a company called Preventus, uh, is on the board, and we work closely in that endeavor. He's able to look at the people who are involved in, the, in setting up those companies and figuring out how can he have a role to help mentor those people. There's something good in everybody and you've got to find it and encourage it. And there's something good in every company and you've got to build it and make, it, make a difference. People rely upon him for really inv invaluable advice. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love helping organizations. Steve says he'll never retire and I think many people say that, but he means it. Retirement's a word that's not in my language. I'll never retire. He was there at the beginning, and he's certainly there at the future. I wish him the best for his next 40 years in the industry.